60 Minutes Rewind. Nearly 20 years ago, scientists stunned the world when they announced they had decoded the genes that make up a human being. They hoped to use that genetic blueprint to advance something called gene therapy, which locates and fixes the genes responsible for different diseases. Now, a clinical trial at the National Institutes of Health is doing exactly that in an attempt to cure sickle cell anemia, a devastating genetic disease that kills hundreds of thousands of people around the world every year. For the past 15 months, we've been following the scientists and patients who are ushering in a genetic revolution. So excited. Today's the big day. It's the day after Christmas, 2017. And 27-year-old Janelle Stevenson has come with her father and brother from Florida to the National Institutes of Health just outside Washington, D.C. Good morning. Good morning. She's one of a small group of patients to receive an infusion yeah. containing altered okay. DNA. That's what they look like. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> Best Christmas present ever. And the clear liquid in the bag contains Janelle's stem cells that have been genetically modified. And there are about 500 million in there. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the hope is the new DNA in the cells will cure Janelle of sickle cell anemia, a brutal disease that causes debilitating okay. pain. At its worst, on a scale of zero to 10, how bad was your pain? We can go beyond a 10. It's, it's terrible, it's horrible. Pain where? Everywhere, as I would. I, uh, my back, my shoulders, elbows, arms, legs, even my cheekbones, just pain. Can you actually describe it? It's a very sharp, like stabbing, almost feels like bone crushing pain. Feels like someone's kind of constricting your bones and then releasing constantly. Pain from sickle cell can occur anywhere blood circulates. That's because red blood cells, normally donut shaped, bend into an inflexible sickle shape, causing them to pile up inside blood vessels. The resulting traffic jam prevents the normal delivery of oxygen throughout the body, leading to problems that include bone deterioration, strokes, and organ failure. The gene that causes sickle cell anemia evolved in places like Sub-Saharan Africa because it protects people from malaria. There, millions have the disease, and it's estimated more than 50% of babies born with it die before the age of five. Right on the bone there. Yeah. In the United States, it affects 100,000 people, Two, mostly African Americans. For Janelle, having the disease as a child often meant spending Christmas in the hospital. As an adult, she struggled through pain to complete college, but keeping a job was tough because something as simple as walking upstairs could trigger a pain crisis. Do you have friends who've died from sickle cell? I do, yes, younger than me. And you've known this your whole life growing up? Right. That you could potentially die early? Right, yes. Did you think you would die early? I did, actually. Um, when I hit about 22, I was like, you know, I'm, for sickle cell, I'm kind of middle-aged right now. What are some of the things that you've always wanted to do that you couldn't do? Honestly, everybody laughs at me for this. I just want to run, to be honest. Things that <laughs> most people would take for just granted. Just basic things. One of the most cruel parts of the disease, Janelle and other patients have told us, is being accused of faking pain to get narcotics, being labeled a drug seeker. During one trip to the emergency department, when she fell to the floor in pain, a doctor refused to help her. And I'm looking up at her, and I'm in tears. I'm, I'm doing the best that I can. And you gotta be thinking. I just, sometimes I just don't understand. I don't get it. Like, so, I'm in so much pain. And you think, I just want some morphine. It just makes me sad that some people just in the medical community just don't get it. So this would be my lab. Yeah. Dr. Francis Collins is director of the National Institutes of Health the largest biomedical research agency in the world. He oversees a nearly $40 billion budget that funds more than 400,000 researchers worldwide. Dr. Collins, please come up to the left. Dr. Collins was head of the Human Genome Project at the NIH in 2000, 
when he made a landmark announcement. After a decade of work, scientists had finally decoded the genes that make up a human being. Today, we celebrate the revelation of the first draft of the human book of life. When did it all start for you? I got excited about genetics as a first year medical student. A pediatric geneticist came to teach us about how genetics was relevant to medicine. And he brought patients to class. And one of the first patients he brought was a young man with sickle cell disease who talked about the experience of sickle cell crises and how incredibly painful those are. And yet it was all because of one single letter in the DNA that is misplaced, a T that should have been an A. And that was profound. You could have all of that happen because of one letter that was misspelled. The double helix of DNA is made up of billions of pieces of genetic information. What Dr. Collins is saying is, out of all that, it's just one error in the DNA code, a T that should have been an A, that causes sickle cell anemia. Fix that error, and you cure the disease. But figuring out how to do that would take more than 20 years of research and a little serendipity. Dr. Collins was playing in the NIH rock band in 2016 when his bass player, hematologist Dr. John Tisdale, started riffing on an idea. We'd finished setting up and went for a pizza before, that. before the gig. <laughs> at, at this point, I, I pitched to Francis that it was really time that we uh, do something definitive for sickle cell disease. In the laboratory, Dr. Tisdale and his collaborators created a gene with the correct spelling. Then, to get that gene into the patient, they used something with a frightening reputation. HIV the virus that causes AIDS. It turns out HIV is especially good at transferring DNA into cells. So this shows the process. Here's how we, it works. Make this the virus. corrected gene, seen here in yellow, is inserted into the HIV virus. Then, bone marrow stem cells are taken from a patient with sickle cell anemia. In the laboratory, those cells are combined with the virus carrying that new DNA. This virus will then find its way to one of those cells and drop off a copy or two of the correctly spelled gene. And then these cells will go back to the patient. If the process the works, the stem enough. cells with the correct DNA will start producing healthy red blood cells. I can hear people, our viewers out there thinking, wait a second, how do you know you're not gonna get AIDS from the HIV virus? The short answer is we cut out the bits that cause infection in HIV and we really replace that with the gene that's misspelled in sickle cell disease so that it transfers that instead of the infectious part. The stakes here are enormous. Yes. There's yeah. really very little safety net here, right? Make no mistake. We're talking about very cutting edge research where the certainty about all the outcomes is not entirely there. We can look back at the history of gene therapy and see there have been some tragedies. Deaths. Yes. In 1999, 18-year-old Jesse Gelsinger received altered DNA to treat a different genetic disease. He died four days later from a massive immune response. And in another trial, two children developed cancer. Janelle Stevenson understands this is a trial with huge risks and no guarantees. This is it. When she arrived at the NIH Clinical Center in December 2017, Janelle asked her brother, Ray, for some help. There goes Ray, cutting my hair. Oh, snip. She decided to cut off all her hair, rather than watch it fall out oh, from the massive man. dose of chemotherapy needed to suppress her immune system so her body wouldn't reject the altered stem cells. I don't know how to feel right now. I'm a little emotional, but... I'm okay, it'll grow back. A few days after the chemotherapy, Janelle received the infusion of genetically modified cells. Is it going good now? Yes. It's just a waiting game. Mm -hmm. But the wait was a painful one, not only for Janelle, but also for her father, Ray. Just a little bit. Who did what little he could as the effects of the chemotherapy kicked in stripping Janelle's throat and stomach of their protective layers. This is she was unable to speak for a week. 
and lost 15 pounds. And because having a severely weakened immune system means even a mild cold can turn deadly, Janelle had to stay in the hospital for nearly a month. Last spring, she moved back to Florida and returned to the NIH for periodic checkups. These are her red blood cells. and It didn't take long for Dr. Tisdale to notice like something that. was happening. This is Janelle before any treatment. Right. All across her blood, you can see these really abnormal shapes. Uh, this one in particular is shaped like a sickle. This is Nine months later, is this is what Dr. Tisdale saw. Not a sickle cell in sight. Was there ever a moment where you saw one of these normal-looking smears and thought, is this the right patient? Oh, absolutely. When you're a scientist, you're skeptical all the time. So first thing you do is look and make sure it's that patient. Go grab another one, make sure it's the same. And we've done all that, and uh, indeed, her blood looks normal. Move, switch your arms, and move. And Remember, Janelle used to struggle just to walk up a flight of stairs. And you fall. Boom. And a fall like this would have landed her in the hospital. Boom! Yeah. Good job, you did it. Bam! Janelle. <laughs> you look amazing. Thank you. I have to say, I was a little nervous when you were thrown and you went down on the mat. It was nothing. It was nothing. My body just felt strong. Tell me about the adjustment that you need to make to go from the old you to the new you. My body, it almost felt like it was like itching to do more. And I was like, all right, well, let's go swimming today. Let's go to the gym today. I'm like, all right, my body loves this. I kind of like it because my, I guess, all my endorphins started pumping. The endorphin high, something yeah. you had never experienced. <laughs> never experienced before, yeah. What was going through your head as you were watching Janelle being thrown down to the mat? I was just saying, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you for medical science, and thank you for giving her a new life. New life, indeed. <laughs> the story will continue after this. I never lived before. Eight other adults with sickle cell anemia have undergone the same gene therapy as Janelle. So far, all are responding well. Dr. Francis Collins says it will take years to improve the treatment to make it more widely available. Here's another dream. There are 7,000 genetic diseases for which we know the precise DNA misspelling. Couldn't this same strategy, this same set of principles work for lots of those? Maybe someday all of them? You've been working on this for decades. You're at a moment which is significant. To lead the Human Genome Project and to put that foundation in place, and now to see that emerging, not just as hoped for advances, but real data showing cures for people. You just used the curing word. <laughs> You're willing to say that? I believe that this looks like a cure. I gotta be careful. But from every angle that I know how to size this up, this looks like a cure.